Well, let's find the area of a regular polygon. We're going to use this regular pentagon, husky, for our example. <laughs> well, you've seen this formula. Area is one half apothem times the perimeter. But do we understand it? Yeah, we'll get back to that later. Let's look at the concept first of what area actually is. Well, um, your worksheet is made purposely on this little grid so that we can actually measure it. And if you check your grid, you take your if you take your metric ruler, you're going to find that I made the intervals here very conveniently in centimeters. So that means every one of those little boxes is a square centimeter. So jumping right to AP calculus, we're just adding up little squares. Let's demonstrate that right here. Now, by experiment, I want you to count these squares. Well, how do we do that? Well, you could do it this way. You could say, okay, I'm going to shade in all the ones like this, all the ones that are completely inside the polygon, and then I could try to come up with some estimate for these. These are the squares that, well, they're inside the polygon, but they're not complete squares. And what do I do with that? Well, then what I could do is I could say, well, adding them up, I don't know, maybe I'll take these two, for example, and combine them into one. See a lot of estimation here. You're not going to get an exact answer, nor should you expect one. Well, maybe you'll do something else. Maybe you'll do this. Maybe you'll generate some other kind of block and you'll say, all right, I'm going to average this out. I'm going to say this piece on the outside kind of makes up for this piece inside. So I'm rearranging the area inside this regular pentagon to fit inside this, in, well, a more rectangular shape. Something, well, something made up of discrete little squares. Of course, we would be doing this if we were finding the area of an irregular polygon. But let's just, let's just try this, or any irregular shape that is. Let's try it here. Go ahead, do your best, count up your squares, and write that number down. That's going to be your estimated area for this regular polygon. Well, you can pause the video now if you're doing that and come back to it. All right, let's go back to some other concepts. First off, we've already learned that all regular polygons may be inscribed in a circle, right? And I know that this radius, new word here, the radius of the polygon is the radius of the circle on the outside. And another word, the apothem. Well, that's the radius, of course, of the, well, where did I put it? Oh, no, where'd that circle go? That, there it is. That's the radius of the circle on the inside. I don't like the little prints. Circles on the outside, circles on the inside. We know how to find the area. Let's suppose I found the area of this circle. And then, let's suppose I found the area, whoops, moving it around there. And let's suppose I found the area of this circle. Well, it seems like there's a relationship here. Clean up that drawing a little bit. I could say, I find those two areas, and I'm going to notice that I've got the blue area, I'll call it, and the orange area. And, well, what, is, what makes sense? Well, how about that, the, you know, that, that this figure should be somewhere in between those two? Just look at it. Look at the figure. Every one of these segments, in this case, well, let's look down here, yk, is a, well, it's tangent to the orange circle, and it is, oh, what was I going to say there? And it's a chord, yes, it's a chord of the, of the blue circle. So it's a tangent, and it's a chord. Of course, these two circles are concentric. So, my guess is that the area is going to be between these two. You know, the Greeks did this. You could find the area. I bet you we could find the area of the circle if we elected a polygon with enough sides. We'll save that for another assignment. Let's just work on this one because we're trying to develop the, you know, the whole concept of limits. My area is between this circle and this circle. 
Now, um, this circle is pretty easy because, well, I made it right here. From right here to here. You measure CM, I can just count. One, two, three. I've got five. I've got five of these of these little blocks here. Well, that's we made them to centimeters, so that's five centimeters in a linear measurement. And of course, five squared is 25, so 25 pi. That's going to be 25 times pi. You're going to need to convert it to decimal to compare it to compare it to this measurement because you're adding blocks there. So let's do that. Um, you're going to have to break out your calculators, and you're going to have to use this formula for your area of your, oops, wait a minute, we're not doing that yet. Hang on, sorry about that. Um, you're going to compare your estimate, your estimate, which was counting up these. You're going to calculate this area. You need to calculate this area too. Now this one will be a little bit trickier. You're going to have to put your ruler on it like this because we're actually measuring here. We'll do the exact, we'll pick up the trig later on, but we're measuring, this is an experiment. So I'm going to measure that, and you need to do it to the nearest tenth. So don't tell me it's six, or don't tell me it's five. It's somewhere in between. Give me the nearest tenth on that radius. And go ahead, calculate the area of the blue circle, the area of the orange circle, and let's put your estimated value in between. And I'm willing to bet you're going to find that this is true, that the area of your polygon is between the orange circle and the blue circle. Okay, let's see how we did. Well, compare, by now you've compared the area that you counted, you've counted up the blocks, and you, well, hopefully you found it's bigger than 25 pi and less than, well, whatever your blue circle came out. Um, well, that's really good. That's, well, that's the experiment part of this. We're going to move now into the, well, measuring and using a more now let's say a more traditional formula here. We're going to use this formula. The area of all regular polygons is one half the apothem times the perimeter. Maybe I forgot to say more about the apothem, but that's because we've got another video which really talks about why this works. But remember, the apothem is the perpendicular. It's drawn perpendicular to the midpoint of any side. And that made sense because remember, it's a radius and therefore, you see here, well, it's tangent to yk, all right? And that means, by definition, it's perpendicular. And in, and right here, I say, wait a minute, yk is a chord of the blue circle. Radius drawn perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Oh, heavens to Mergentroy, this is great stuff. Look at that, all that circle stuff really pays off. So let's just get to uh, our measurement here and a little bit of calculation, okay? Um, I'm going to, well, I'm going to pull out, you're going to have to pull this thing out and say, all right, I'm going to measure. Um, you're going to measure it. It doesn't line up exactly with the squares. You can count the blocks to estimate, but I need you to get this to the nearest tenth to make it any reasonable, anything near reasonable. It's pretty clear that the apothem, oh, I can count that. One, two, three, oh, 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 that's five, five, just like the count would say. The apothem is going to be five centimeters. So, well, let me see. Well, I measured 7.3. See what you come up with. I don't know, my class 7.3, 7.4, to the nearest tenth. You should be that good with a small ruler. Then, I'm just going to substitute. There it is. And let me see, I'm going, I know the units are square centimeters because I'm, remember, I'm counting up those little boxes. Each of those is a square centimeter. Let's pull out our calculator and check this out. We can use a, you know, the old four banger here. We don't need a fancy calculator. I've got 36 and a half times five. Okay. And I'm going to divide by two. 91 and a quarter, as we'd say on the East Coast. But I'll say 91.25. Well, it does it every time. 91 and a quarter centimeters, how significant, I can't really measure that well. So really, 91, 92, somewhere in that range. So that's what we got by measuring a side. Now, go back and check your work. Is that in between the area of the blue circle and 
the area of the orange circle. Okay, I promised you trig, but let's review why this formula works. Really quick here. Um, it has to do with this. We know what that is. That's a triangle right there. That triangle has an area of one half base times height. Now, it's pretty uh, obvious to us that the apothem of this particular polygon right there, that's the height of this triangle. Remember that. That'll be handy. And then we say, well, okay, the base of the triangle is equal to S, or the side, whether it's this side or, uh, or this side. All the sides are congruent. Remember, it's regular. And then I could say, well, let's suppose I just say I got five different triangles. One, two, I love that count. I've got these five triangles, okay? So I got those five triangles, and then I were to go like this. Hmm. Just rotate them. Straighten them all out, just like that. Well, right there, I could say, find the area of one triangle, multiply it by five. And since the area of a triangle is one-half base times height, the area of the whole pentagon is five times one-half base times height. Okay, let's stay with that. Stay with that. Now, we'll keep this more general. So, um, let me see. Well, what do we do next? Um, well, I'm going to replace, take this formula, I'm going to replace the H of height with the A, apothem, said so right there. Oh, now, what can we do next? Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a rearrangement here. Multiplication is commutative there. So let's just, and associative, so let's, let's work this out here. I want to group the 5 times the base, and I'll pull the 1 half out. And you'll see why right now and say, ta-da, right there. Because the perimeter is the five bases in this case. If it were a decagon, it would be the ten bases. A dodecagon, the twelve, etc. So we can simplify this whole thing. Because again, five times the base, in this case, is the perimeter. And A is apothem. This pentagon right there, one-half apothem times perimeter. Every regular polygon, one-half apothem times perimeter. And finally, let's do some trig. You remember the central angle, 360 divided by 5, 72. We split it in half here with this triangle. Yeah, we already talked about that. 36. That generates this beautiful right triangle right here. We have a 36 degree acute angle, and we've got the three sides represented by, well, I'm going to call it the ABR. That's what I like to call this triangle. A a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and a is for apothem, a is for adjacent. Hey, that's pretty catchy. Very convenient, too. I'm just going to use the letter b for the opposite side here, and, and keeping in mind that that's only half the side. And, of course, the radius is the hypotenuse of this particular triangle. Now, if we're sticking with our experimental figure, let's see, the Apothem should be our given, because honestly, that's how I made it, 5 centimeters from there to there. So there you go. You've got a given where the apothem is 5 centimeters. The whole point of all these um, regular polygons, we're going to rely on trig because we know one acute angle, we can find, and know one of these three measurements, we can find the other ones as needed. So let's see what we've got. Um, I need to know the perimeter, so I'm going to need to know the side. This will help get me there. And I know the adjacent. The adjacent happens to be 5, the adjacent, the apothem. And I know opposite over adjacent. Oh, let me see. So Katoa, we all know that that's our good friend, the tangent. The tangent, again, the opposite hmm. over the adjacent. <laughs> Pretty convenient. You all remember that from a few chapters back. And you also remember that we have to rearrange this equation. In this case, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5, and I'll switch them left to right. So now I have an expression for B in my triangle right there. Okay, um, well, B isn't really part of anything. It's just half of a side. My students like to say BS. Um, 
Well, if this, if this section is 5, then twice that is 10 tangent of 36. And if the side is 10 tangent 36, I got 5 of them. That's 50 tangent of 36. So, um, yeah, you could have gone right here to here, multiplying by 2n. But take the extra step. Reinforce the point that this variable is, doesn't represent a side, but only half a side. Okay, now let's, um, let's clean this up and substitute it in because I know that the area is one half the apothem given and the perimeter, which we now have. So, um, clean this up. Ooh, I need to get rid of some of these things. It's too much clutter. Go away. Go away. Now, substitute. There's my one half, my given apothem, and this expression for my perimeter. Heavens to Mergentroids, that's a mess. Um, well, you know what we do. Um, we're going to, let's simplify all the constants here. I've got, I could say, half of 50, and then multiply by 5, or I can 5 times 50, and then divide by 2. I don't care how you do it, but you're going to consolidate those, those three constants in this case. So, I simplify, and I'm going to, say 125 times the tangent of 36. Beautiful. Um, and notice I just slipped in there the units. Um, sometimes it's too much clutter, but in the end we know we're dealing with square centimeters, those little squares right there. So let's pull up ah, our calculator. Oof. <laughs> we need an upgrade. So, ah, that's beautiful. So 125 tangent of 36. I like to start with the tangent. That way I can look at it and say, hmm, yeah, good. That looks familiar. Now I'll multiply that number times 125. And there you go. 90 and 8 tenths square centimeters. Not bad. And if you remember in our, well, look back, see what you did when you're in your estimate and see how this compares. Now that was a lot of fun. So um, uh, let's hang on. Let's let's try let's try our hand at other experiments. When we know maybe we know the radius and maybe we know the side. Doesn't matter which one of these three we know. We can use our trig, and we can find the necessary measurements to find the area of any regular polygon. Well, we were almost done, but somebody asked, "What if I know the side?" Now, this is a different pentagon, regular pentagon, with a side of 20 millimeters. Well, let's just blast through this because now we got this down. Same triangle over there, exact same thing, ABR. So, uh, area is one half apothem times perimeter. Let me see if I, well, if I know this, yeah, you know, I got the perimeter, I got five of those, and all I'm going to need is the, well, the apothem right there. That's all I need. So on my trig, I know this, and I'm going to need that opposite over adjacent. Well, sine, cosine, tangent. So katoa again, another tangent. Hey, it's getting easy. Um, so this time, I know that my B, well, it's going to be half of the side. Remember, B this thing is half of a given side. So I'm just going to use 10 right there. And I'm going to say that's 10 over, in this case, A. Now, when I rearrange, remember, means extremes. I can switch the means. And you should remember how to, whoops, what did I do there? Okay, right there. I'm going to switch the means, switch the A and the tangent of 36. A is 10 divided by the tangent of 36. Okay, one half AP. Well, the perimeter, 520 is 100, so let's just jump right to it. There you go. I've got one half, and I've got the 10, and I've got the 100. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, let me see, that's the perimeter. Well, let me see. 1,000, half of 1,000 is 500. So let's consolidate, again, the three uh, constants there. Or half of 10 is 5, 5 times 100 is 500. No matter how you do it, you get that. And then you pull up your handy dandy calculator. We'll get it right this time. Um, 
yeah, I, I'm going to do it different this time. I'm going to say 500 divided by. Now, be careful. If your calculator doesn't know order of operations, you might screw up here. But I'm going to put in 36 tangent. Yeah, that looks good. A tangent of 36. Remember, that's that. I've already said 500 divided by it equals. There it is. So it looks like 668 um, and some change square millimeters. That was so much fun. You know we have to do just one more example. Okay, I promise this is the last one. Well, for the front side of this worksheet, we're going to again use this formula and our trig, but this time we have a given measure for a radius. So again, this is a different pentagon, but now the radius is 12 meters. Now, I need to find the apothem and perimeter. Well, I need to solve, the, well, I've got to use trig once, but i got to do it twice because I need to go around the figure too. <laughs> kind of like a bonus. So let's work, uh, look at the apothem first. I've got the adjacent or the apothem. I've got the adjacent there over the hypotenuse. And we all know adjacent over hypotenuse. So katoa, that's going to be my cosine. So for the apothem, I'm going to get cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 12. Pretty slick. Okay, um, how about when I need to solve for this? Well, then I don't need that anymore. Get out of there. I'm going to need the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. And you all know that that is the sine. So yes, we get to use the sine finally. That's going to be B over 12. Pretty good? You okay with that? All right, let's charge ahead. Uh, lonely tangent. We got used twice already. That'd be okay. Let's, um, let's rearrange these. Notice 12 in the denominator of both. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation. In this case, I'm taking this e uh, sine of 36. I multiply by my 12. And for the apothem, again, multiply both sides by 12. And I switch the equations left to right. Symmetric property. Let me spread this out a little bit right there. Well, I've got the apothem. And I don't have the perimeter yet. Well, that's pretty simple. And I'll go through the slow steps just because it's fun. I know, again, my students say BS, 12. Uh, that's B20. I double that. I get 24. And again, if I multiply that times number of sides, 5, I get 120. Well, this time it probably would have been easier to take B times 2N to get 120. Remember, this is this side, so 10 of those go all the way around the figure, or 5 of those. So now all we've got to do is put this all together. Oh, i sorry, I tossed my formula there, but we know it by now. The apothem is one, well, it's one half apothem times perimeter, and it's going to be square meters. Yikes, I may have to scroll this up a little bit for you all. Um, Let's consolidate again the numbers, or the constants, I mean, that I've got 12, or 120, I've got 12, and I have a half. Well, half of 12 is 6 times 120. That's 720. Are we off the page? Yeah, it's getting kind of close there. Let's scoot up just a little bit there. Whoops. And now let's bust out the calculator and get her done, as they say. Um, this time I'm going to take 720 times there's 36. That's the cosine of 36. I'll, I could hit equals, just make sure I'm on the right track. That looks good. Times the sine of 36. And there you go. Roughly 342 um, square meters they are this time. Well done. Finally, you're done with the first part of the worksheet. Now you can flip it over. Let's get to the backside.